Hey everybody, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny olson Silic, and we've got an exciting show for you this week. We'll take you out on a special late season antlerless deer hunt that happened here in January that I was able to be a part of. Lots of excitement on that hunt. You won't want to miss that. And we're going to take a look at some of the very first ice fishing we've had this season too. Well, that's right, Jenny. Ice fishing has been pretty suspect here in mid-Michigan and southern Michigan, but our own Gabe Van Warmo is recently able to get out with the USA Ice Fishing Team, show you what goes in as they get ready to take on the world when it comes to ice fishing. You won't want to miss that. We're also going to have something just a little bit different. We're going to visit with a couple Michigan sportsmen who are putting together a movie all about hunting state land in northern Michigan. We're going to show you that promo, and that's going to air next week in Grand Rapids if you're interested. Really kind of a neat story there. Lots of good stuff on this week's show. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze, dancing on the pine forest floor. The autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan, Michigan Out of Doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy, the wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees the sweet smell of nature's in the air from the great lakes to the quiet stream shining like a sportsman's dream it's a love of michigan we all share michigan out of doors is presented by by country smokehouse a sportsman's destination since 1988 Featuring varieties of homemade sausage, jerky, brats, and gourmet entrees. Holiday gift boxes can be assembled in-store or online. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By AnglerQuest Pontoons, a mid-Michigan company building boats for fishermen by fishermen. AnglerQuest Pontoons are designed for comfort and functionality. On the web at anglerquestpontoons.com. Soaking in the rich tradition of Michigan hunting for over 30 years, Vanguard is proud to sponsor our friends at Michigan Out of Doors TV. On a small lake in mid-Michigan, the United States ice fishing team met to practice before they headed overseas to this year's international competition. Although ice is scarce so far this winter, a back bay had about three to four inches of good clear ice. These guys are all excellent ice fishermen, but the competition isn't quite what you'd find here in the U.S. This is why the guys would be doing a friendly competition for practice, but using international rules. Yeah, this is match fishing. Yeah. You select a predetermined area. You don't get, to, you know, in American competitions, you usually get to fish vast areas of the lake. Here, you got to fish within the boundaries that we select. So sometimes the fish are bigger there, you know, and there's plenty. Sometimes there's hardly none. But it's all equal because everybody gets to fish the same area here. And there's rules about uh, um, how far you, how close you can be. So they got, you know, the five meter distance so that they can't come in on this gentleman here. Like Larry's got him going here. Sometimes. We, we get select areas where there ain't no fish and it's, you know, and everybody, there's a whole bunch of people, I've seen it where, where people uh, got skunked, you know, and only one or two caught a fish in his own, you know. I've seen extremely tough fishing, so a minnow can really matter then, you know. So in competition, these guys aren't by themselves out here on the ice. No, them. they're going to be officials standing around just like Mike's standing here, keeping an eye on everything that's going on. Is it the number of fish or is it the uh, It's going to be weight, we're weight, but we're just doing a workout here today and we have to we have to live within the rules and regulations of, of every state. So the way we do this here is we is we, we count them for, for a couple heats. We're going to do a weight heat in the last heat of the day, uh, you know, but we're not here to kill a bunch of fish, you know, unnecessarily. I can't carry anything, I leave it all behind. <laughs> anything I carry out there is going to be scattered. It's got to be attached. <laughs> Explain those rods you got there. Just a palm rod for, they're designed for speed fishing and micro fishing. So I mean, it just gives you more control and you're closer to the action so you can stick those little fish. And they actually, uh, we do a tournament circuit and they're uh, big on that now for even the big finicky bluegills on pressure. So they turn out, they're, they're getting a little more popular here. So without electronics, what, how are you working this? I like to fish down to start, find the bottom and go back up. I don't get a bite here soon, I'll go to my other hole. 
During international competition, these guys will not be able to use power augers or electronics. They will have a spotter that helps them know when one area starts to fish better than another. In this heat, the boundary had intentionally been set up in shallow water where the fish were small to simulate the competition they might find. Normally fish would all be kept and weighed, but in this friendly competition, the first two one hour heats would be for numbers. The last one would be for weight. Competitors can drill as many holes as they want, but can only save two holes, one to fish and one to save. Holes have to be marked or else another competitor can use them. The strategy is, is using the five meters that you have to maintain between flags to protect the other holes and keep other people away from you. The, the key to a lot of spring bobber fishing is getting your jig weighted to the spring. A lot of people don't have them weighted right. And they're actually using too heavy of a spring for the size jig that they're using. What are you looking for? Yeah, a nice bend about like it is right there. A lot of people like to run them straight out. And they miss a lot of bites that way. These fish moved again. Yeah, the, the orange jig is a three millimeter Kodiak. It's just a normal tungsten we use here in the US. And then the other two are, they're like a, a two six and a two four from overseas. Um, but their tungsten is actually a lot more pure and a lot heavier than our tungsten is. So they can use a lot smaller and get the same weight. Um, so when you're finesse fishing, obviously you're going, you're going a lot smaller. And with it being a lot heavier tungsten than our tungsten that we get, um, we can finesse fish a lot better with the jigs that, that we get from over there. The cost on, on a jig over there for one of the ones I just tied on is about five bucks a piece. Um, they range anywhere from $3 to, you can buy pure gold ones over there. And I've never heard the exact price, but I've heard rumors that they're as much as 20 to $30 a piece or more, but they're pure gold. And obviously gold's even heavier than the tungsten is. so. Um, obviously not something I'd ever use over here, but in world competition that, that is, you know, if you get a few of them, people do use those. Yeah, usually seven or eight guys on the team that travel with the team overseas are from Michigan. You know, some of the best ice fishermen in, in the country are from Michigan. Um, there's a lot of good fishermen in other, in, in, in other states, though. I'm not taking credit for them, but this style, there's, you know, it's very specific. We all kind of grew up combat fishing, if you will, so, you know, it's pin everybody into it pin everybody into one zone and uh, see what happens and you know everybody we kind of just wanted to have have a have a big event like this just where we could throw down world style and you know it's a great practice for the guys on the world team I'm I made the team this year but I'm actually not going some other stuff I got to take care of this year so I wish wish the team good luck but can't make it this year Veteran of several ice teams and the United States only individual gold medal winner, Mike Bodecker, explains how this international style is so different from anything we see here in the States. Well, it's completely different than what the United States is. It's a whole different mindset. Over there, they're after strictly numbers of fish, and, and the size don't make any difference over there. In the United States, we have the attitude, well, we have limits here too, but there, our whole theory is to catch big fish because we like to eat them. Uh, they eat their fish over there too, but they, they don't mind eating everything that they catch. It don't matter if it's one inch or, or ten inches. But um, it, yeah, the, the whole mindset is, is different in the United States. We're after quality here. And, um, and we have limits too. Overseas, they don't, don't seem to have any limits whatsoever. It, uh, it's just catch as many as you can. And uh, uh, I don't know if it's just the culture or what, but uh, uh, it's just international fishing is completely different. The rods that they use in the international stuff are these little 10 inch, 10, 11 inch rods, palm rods they call them, ultra finesse type of stuff. And uh, it's just, it's, it's, it's just, it's How much time we got? speed fishing is, is How much time? more, I guess, related to anything. Their quality doesn't make any difference to them at all. Let's see, I've been to Poland, Ukraine, Kazakhstan, Belarus and in the United States I fished twice in the United States for the USA team too so yeah we it's been a uh, I never thought I would travel the world ice fishing <laughs> of all things <laughs> travel the world ice fishing you, you just don't get that in your mind when you're growing up <laughs> but, uh, but it's it's every place to go is just a thrill and so 
it, it just like watching other people and uh, made lots of friends with all the international teams and everything. And, uh, it's, it's been a real joy and I'm looking forward to going to Bulgaria. That's uh, going to be a nice little trip over there. It's been tough to find enough ice in southern Michigan to practice this year, but the competition helped knock off some of the rust for sure. Keith Niffin won this year's practice event and will be competing for his first time on the USA ice fishing team. This year's competition is in Bulgaria, and the ice team will be leaving in a few days to fly over there. If you'd like to follow the standings, the USA Ice Fishing Facebook page will have updates on all the action. Good luck to the competitors, and hopefully these guys can bring back the first U.S. medal in ice fishing on foreign ice. Well, by the end of the regular deer season here this year, I found myself with a pocket full of unused tags. Not a situation you want to be in. I found out about a special late season antlerless deer hunt that was happening in the Alpena area. So I packed up and headed up there. In recent years, there have been quite a few opportunities across the state for deer hunters to extend their season with a late season antlerless hunt in January. One of those hunts happens in the northeast part of the Lower Peninsula in Alpena County. It's the January late firearm hunt for antlerless deer in southern Alpena County. What we want to do is provide another opportunity for private landowners in southern Alpena County to manage deer on their land. And we really want to focus those management efforts in an area where cattle are at risk for disease. And that disease up here is bovine tuberculosis. We're also hoping to provide another opportunity for those private landowners to manage the deer on their land and really make sure that they can reach those buck to doe ratios that they're looking for to get the quality of deer that they hope to see up here. And then we're also hoping to increase access to private lands during this hunt with the hunting access program. This is the second year we've done this and it was in the same location last year, so Southern Alpena County. So the hunt is January 3rd through 6th and the 10th through the 13th and any private land south of Highway M32 in Alpena County is available to be hunted and to make sure that people that aren't from the area can participate in the hunt. The hunting access program has enrolled properties just for those two weekends. So 23 properties were enrolled specifically for people to hunt on these two weekends. And it was over 2,800 acres that were made available. And that's in addition to the six properties that are enrolled year round. And those properties have about 800 acres. So there's great opportunity for people that aren't from here to come and hunt if they don't have a friend or family property here already. It, it's a wonderful program. The DNR really steps up with this type of program. It really helps us guys out that want a deer hunt and really don't have a place to hunt. And it, it's, it's wonderful, nice. just wonderful. Any unused tags from DMU 487, uh, so that would be a private land antlerless tag then or your statewide combo license can be used during this hunt. As luck would have it, I still had both of my combo tags in my pocket on January 5th, so I hit the road and met up with a couple of good friends who were helping out a local farmer with his deer numbers. And what's happening today? All right, so we're gonna gonna split up and hunt a field. We got a field here that the deer have been coming into. Um, not we're right in that uh, late doe season area, so um, they've been coming in there feeding in the evenings, and hopefully it's a nice day. Hopefully they'll come out a little early and feed, and we can get a get one or two does down. All right, so we're breaking up into two groups. What are you guys doing? We're going to go hunt on the edge of a creek uh, down in a cedar swamp and try to catch them on the way to the field. And then you and Sherm, I think, are going to sit on the field and see if they're, you can get them when they get to the field. Well, Sherm, my camera guy, and I made it out to the blind. This is a Taj Mahal blind in here. Uh, we have a beautiful view out front and the, the snow is melting. It's a little warm, but we're hoping those deer want to come out for some afternoon food before shooting time's over tonight. So what I'm borrowing your gun. Yes. Sherm insisted I borrow his gun, but what am I what am I shooting? It's a Remington 6.5 Creedmoor. Okay. Um, it's their latest generation and it's the field length here is almost four hundred yards, so and I've shot it out to six hundred, so it's It'll do the job for you. All right, it you got it all dialed kick. in? It's all dialed in. You're all right. ready to go. Okay. And if you miss, you can blame me. Hey, we should put a bullet or two in there, shall we? Well, that <laughs> would help. <laughs> all right. This is going to be comical, if nothing else. We've got my husband, Matt, with Sherm's buddy, Ed, 
They're in a pop-up blind in the woods over there by the creek, and they've got another camera. So we'll see what happens. If nothing else, we're going to have a lot of fun out here. <laughs> exactly. It's a beautiful day for hunting. All right. The farmer who let us hunt here is a friend of Ed Bolanowski's and was happy to let us hunt his land and hopefully take a couple of does out of the population. In this field that we were hunting, the farmer wasn't even able to harvest a second cutting of hay this past season due to the high number of deer eating his crop every day. Time was ticking away this afternoon, and with less than a half hour of shooting time left, Sherm and I finally spotted the first few deer of the day. Oh yeah, there's three of them out there. <laughs> You're fine. You're fine. Are they going to come any closer? Nope. Holy smoke. You got her. How far is that? 398. How far are they? 398 yards. 398. And you think I can shoot out there? I know you got it. The second one down? Second one down. Uh oh. Are they moving? 388. Wait, they're moving, they're moving, they're moving. They're chucking in. They're not stopping. You got the one on the... the middle one is the biggest, eh? Yep, the They're one. all does. They're all does. Shoot the middle one. I can't get steady here. Second dot. Yep. No idea. You got it. The tail is going down. The, the one that went off to the left? Yep, the one that went off to the left. You think I got her? I do. I think I got her. I think I a good shot. I'll find out. What time is it here? It's 5.12, so we still had... Yeah. We got 20 minutes. 20, 20 minutes of shooting line. Sure, we did it. <laughs> nice shot. We gotta go check this out. Wow, if... I couldn't uh, tell. I, if I, I, I'm almost positive you made a great shot on the deer. Alright. So, there's we're no gonna... wind, it's still... We're gonna... We'll find out here in just a minute. All right. Let's do it, do it. Okay. I think you got it, Jenny. In fact, I'm almost positive you got that deer. All right. So we're going to know here in just a minute. Okay. Sherm and I made our way down the field to check for any sign of blood. Sherm was confident I had connected with the doe, but right. seeing is believing. Check this out. I tried zooming in back on the blind. It's 400 yards. Well, 398 yards. Look at this. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I would say we got that, a good deer. That 6.5 Creedmoor? 6.5 Creedmoor. Unbelievable caliber. Sherm let me use his gun out here. I've never in my life shot at anything this far away. I mean, I don't want to count my chickens before they hatch, but... I'm pretty sure we have a dead doe out there somewhere, so. I think so. Let's go track her. Should be pretty Let's easy. Let's go track her. We see a deer. Look at this blood. She's still, how far did she go? 100 yards? About 100 yards. Wow. wow. Oh my goodness. Unbelievable. Sherman. Sure, Pretty sure I might forget your gun in my truck when I head yeah, back I, down I, I, I think it's gone. That's awesome. Gone. All right. Nice mature doe. We're helping out the farmer. And uh, I think tomorrow morning we're going to go take this into the check station, get her officially checked, and uh, get a tag on her. I've got plenty of tags <laughs> left. You're allowed to use any of the combo deer tags from the 2018 deer season. So. Lucky for me, I was unsuccessful up until today. Today's January 5th. <laughs> All right. Thanks again, Sherm. You're welcome. The next morning, we headed over to the DNR deer check station in Alpena to get the doe aged and to submit the head for bovine TB testing. With venison in our freezer from Matt's opening day buck, I donated the doe to Ed, who was happy to take it. The testing aged the doe at three and a half years, and she tested negative for TB. Special thanks to the landowner and to Ed Bolanowski and Sherm Hubbard for helping to make one more successful deer hunter here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Well, in our next story, we're going to do something just a little bit different. We're going to visit with a Michigan sportsman who has recently just put together basically a full-length movie all about hunting the state land of northern Michigan. It's going to be a really cool project. We're excited to see it, and we wanted to show you a little bit more about it.
I think that it started in a similar manner to uh, how everybody grows up here hunting in Michigan, you know, uh, friends and family, grandparents and my parents got us into it. And uh, my brother and I just had a huge love for deer hunting. And as we got older, we wanted to share that with as many people as possible. And that ultimately kind of led us to this season and this film project. This film does look really interesting, and we were excited to help promote anything that would promote deer hunting, and especially on state land. It's probably one of the hardest things personally that I've ever taken on. I never took a camera into the woods with me before. I've never recorded a deer hunt ever. Uh, and I reached out to a friend uh, about 14 months ago that is a videographer and a producer and asked what it would take to do a film on deer hunting in northern Michigan. Taking a camera to the woods is never as easy as people think, but to do that with the goal of making a movie can make an already tough task even more difficult. Being that it was my first film project, it was pretty important to me that we actually did go through and uh, harvest the deer to be able to not just show that portion of it, but the stages afterwards I think are important and sometimes missed when people do pieces like this uh, about the friendship and family of shooting a text or a phone call, hey, I got a deer, and meeting up and standing around the buck pole at a traditional deer camp, and I really wanted to, to showcase part of that. For those of us who have hunted the state land of the Pigeon River State Forest where this film was captured makes this film even more special. That part of our state is a magical place for sure, and this project hopefully will shine a light on the importance of public ground. So we partnered up with a uh, conservation group, uh, the Michigan chapter of Backcountry Hunters and Anglers, which is the sportsman's voice for public lands. Um, they raise awareness for public land conservation and anytime there's issues, uh, you know, at the state or federal level that need to be addressed, uh, that sportsmen should be aware of. They're the group that seems to have the, uh, you know, the squeakiest wheel that people are listening to. So we partnered with them on the premiere and that physical premiere will be at a theater uh, Saturday, the evening of January 26 in Grand Rapids. And then after that, we will have a DVD and a 4K download that we will host probably through a link on our website. So with no further ado, here is the trailer for The Forest. Special thanks to Kevin for spending some time with us and for what looks like a very cool look at what it takes to not only take on the task of hunting deer on state land, but capturing it all and letting folks see all that goes into the adventure and the journey of heading into our forests here in Michigan's Out of Doors.
Thanks for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you join us again next week. We've got a special show for you. We're going to sit down with the DNR and talk about CWD in our deer population here in Michigan. Kind of a hot topic there. We'll also head to Grand Lake up near Alpena for some more ice fishing action up there. We're working on a lot of great stories for you here this winter. You can always check out where we're at or what we're doing online. Well, that's right, Jenny. We are on all the different social media platforms. That's a good way to reach us. And our website's another good way to kind of keep tabs on us. That's at michiganoutofdoorstv.com. We have full episodes of the show there every week. And if you're ever on YouTube, you can actually subscribe to the Michigan Out of Doors TV channel. Get an email every time we post something new. So lots of good stuff coming over the next several weeks. And if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Greenstone Farm Credit Services, making recreational land ownership possible across Michigan and Northeast Wisconsin. Begin your land financing journey at one of Greenstone's 37 locations or greenstonefcs.com. By Pictured Rocks Boat Cruises of Munising, exploring Lake Superior's Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore. With its sandstone cliffs, caves, waterfalls, and lighthouses, Pictured Rocks Boat Cruises on the web at picturedrocks.com. By Showspan, producing consumer shows including Outdoorama February 28th through March 3rd at Novi Suburban Showplace. The show features tackle, trips, boats, outfitters, wildlife encounters, and of course, Big Buck Night. That's Outdoorama in Novi February 28th through March 3rd. When I want a far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan.